look no further than 71 Clarence Street in Cornerbrook. It's been a long time since Jack's made a wooden snowshoe. The frames of his snowshoes are steel. This contraption is something he came up with to measure frames for children's snowshoes. With this, he can cut a lot of frames quickly. If a child can walk, Jack says they're old enough to snowshoe. He's made pairs for children less than three years old. The first was for his daughter, Jeannie. At the time, Jack was experimenting with different materials in his basement. And my daughter used to be down in the, she's a little girl, three years old. She used to come down in the, in the brick room with me. And one day she said, Dad, make a pair of snowshoes for me. Well, I said, what kind do you want? And I was trying to get them made out of metal. Well, she said, I'd like to have the good one, the wooden ones. So I made her a pair of wooden ones. I still got them in the basement there, but uh, I finally come now. I don't make any wooden ones anymore. No, now it's steel all the way, and not just any steel. Jack uses high tensile spring steel in his snowshoes, the stuff they used to use in pre-stressed concrete. Why, you ask? Well, because it's so strong. It's, you, you can't, I've never, ever had a pair. One guy brought a pair back to me, broke, and they were broken up there. He had to run over a tractor or something with them, because that is impossible, you know, under snowshoeing condition. You can't. There's no way you can break that. And besides that, it's very light in weight, very strong. It has a certain amount of give in it. Like some metal you use is very uh, subtle, like in the, you'll sink, you know, it'll bend, and it's very tiring, you know, you're going along and the, the snowshoes are all giving and like bending, but these won't. You just put the uh, rod in the frame, and you close off all the uh, bar bolts and this adjustment here to keep it in place. And when you get this bent, I'll bend it for you. You drop, you drop a reinforcing pin in on the joint behind, and then you weld it. The steel is key to his snowshoe success, Jack thinks, and a closely guarded secret. Jack will tell you what kind of steel he uses, but he won't tell you where he gets it. Apparently, it's not that easy to come by. All he'd tell us was that after years of searching, he finally found a supplier on the mainland. It's a trade secret. Because, you know, any fool can make a snowshoe, but you've got to have the materials. And I have one, as far as I'm concerned, I'm bragging, as far as I'm concerned, I have one of the best snowshoes on the market, and uh, I don't want to destroy my own market. You know? So if people want this, this type of snowshoe, they come to me. From the shed to the basement, this is phase three, the tedious task of washing and cutting the thick inner tubes that cover the snowshoe frame and become the foot harness. You don't have to be crazy to do this, but it helps. But like I say, it's a necessary evil. You have to have it, or at least I have to have it. But the tubes are becoming harder and harder to get because they're not so many uh, tubeless, they're mostly tubeless tires now. Tubes are not used very much anymore. So eventually I'll have to go to something else, but I just don't know what yet, what, I, what it will be. The tubes are from tractor trailer tires. The material Jack uses for the mesh in his snowshoes is the stuff of dragger nets, the exact same twine they use offshore. Jack has a road map on the wall markings which tell him exactly how much twine he needs for whatever size snowshoe he's making. Children's, adults, small, medium, or large. My wife doesn't appreciate it very much, but they're first all down through the hall. I know which one is which. If you, you put a mark there, and it was too much, whatever you have left over, you shorten up your mark by that, you know, by that much, or if it's not enough, you increase it a little. And then after two or three periods, you get it right down pretty close. You never get the exact, but Close enough that you don't have too much wastage. It. 
If the early native snowshoe makers had had this twine, they probably would have used it too. Rawhide leather stretches when it gets wet, and it isn't as durable, but this stuff stands up to quite a lot. So does Jack. It's no easy task making snowshoes all day long. First when I started, like even putting the rubber around, I couldn't do it probably, probably six or seven uh, frames until I got used to it. used to make my arms and wrists and sore and uh, make, uh, tired and to be actually ache. But now it doesn't matter. I can, I can do 20 or 30 pairs in a day. But he can't web that many. Jack has knit eight pairs in a day, but that's the exception rather than the rule. Normally, he's satisfied if he finishes four pairs. The hardest part is getting it committed to your memory. The different ways you get to put the twine. And it's very difficult sometimes to remember, especially, uh, you know, when your mind starts to wander and you'll make a mistake. And, and you, if you're young, you'll cry, but then if you're old like I am, you tend to swear a lot. So. <laughs> because you've got to go back and fix it. Jack's wife, Teresa, knows all about it. She spends a lot of time in the computer room these days, having sacrificed her rec room to the cause. All during the winter, he sells them, and um, I mean, he's about the only person on the street, really, that's always praying for snow, and you know, we don't have a neighbor that's really talking to us during the winter because they all know Jack is praying for snow. <laughs> it befell my lot in life to be a snowshoe maker, and I'm quite happy about it. I had a great life, and I quite contented with my wife and family, and, and now I'm making snowshoes, and that's fine, you know. I don't think I'd ever be able to become a millionaire, but then, I don't know if you could mention names, but Donald Trump is not all that happy either, you know. He's got <laughs> problems too. I'm not certainly not known as the snowshoe woman, but he is known as the snowshoe man. A lot of people do identify when we go downtown or anything, they'll Oh, I know you, you're the snowshoe man, you know, but, I do mean. You, do you get a charge out of that? Oh, definitely. And so does he, of course. The more recognition he gets, the better he likes it. <laughs> you know, people ask me, do I think I make the best snowshoes, you know? And I said, well, yes. If I say yes, you'll think I'm bragging. And if I say no, you'll call me a liar. So what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> you know, yes, I got the best snowshoe. Sure I am. And I'm very proud of it. So we know how Jack feels about his snowshoes, but what do other people think? We'll find out right after the break. <laughs>